Hi, I'm out here at the in New Mexico, and I just uh, wanted to show you this uh, this beautiful Luria species, this beautiful um, uh, chaparral or creosote bush, as some people talk, call it. If you can see the flowers there pretty well, and the leaves very resinous. This is one of my favorite plants. This is one of the first herbs I probably really learned much about and started using maybe 30 years ago, uh, particularly for wound infection and wound management. Uh, it's just, just an amazing herb. So uh, we're out in New Mexico right now, just coming back from Navajo Nation, and this is, uh, this is you know, we're in May, and it's just when we're gonna see a lot of the Luria starting to bloom. There are miles and miles and miles of this plant out here in this area in New Mexico, and. Arizona, West Texas. Sorry, I got bugs <laughs> that I'm brushing off my face here. Um, so we're out here on our way back in uh, Faywood Hot Springs, and I uh, just wanted to talk for a second about this plant because it's such an amazing plant. Uh, so this is uh, this is we use normally the leaf and the when I say leaf, I mean the leaf and the twig. You don't have to like pull the leaf separate from the twig to use it, but I usually cut the plant, uh, the, the leaf, any time during the year. It doesn't have to be in flower or in the summer or the winter or whatever, any time. But I like to go for the, the more the green, more luscious leaves if I can. And just, just clip off twigs. Uh, find big old plants that have lots and lots of leaves all over them and just, just quick clip those off. And then uh, put them, make sure you you know you put them in a paper or, or some sort of a burlap or whatever cloth bag. Don't put them in plastic because they're, uh, uh, which is kind of a strange thing, but the, they'll actually go bad really quickly if you, if you uh, keep the moisture in on them. You really they really have to have a lot of air as you harvest them and when you're drying them and then once they're dried they last for a long time years i literally i have i've had them around for three four years you know in a nice airtight container and they're still just fine this is an amazing plant for so many different things so i talked about a wound healing infection management uh, it's a wound healer it's an anti-infective it is incredible proliferative for tissue proliferative for for uh, damage to skin that's how i first started to use it when i had a really bad laceration once and i was just incre i was amazed i actually packed the powder inside the wound and taped it shut and by the next day uh and went to bed and the next day this this wound this really deep laceration i had had, had just literally kind of bled out it, it, it excreted all of that that's kind of into a scab a, a sort of a chaparral scab and when i, wa I carefully washed that away it was it looked like a plastic surgeon had had pulled those edges of this of the laceration together um, i don't necessarily recommend packing a wound if you don't know if you're if you're, especially if you don't have a lot of medical experience i don't think it's a good idea but if there was a plant to do that with this is one of them this is because it's so anti-infective so internally now it's toxic right it's a very toxic plant you have to be careful you can't take high doses of this it's a toxic to the liver uh it has been used there's been some anti-cancer research on it and there's been an actually a person who died uh probably she was in chemotherapy at the same time but may have overdosed on this and it's in, and because of that it became a big deal uh with the fda as, as you know really a, a plant that was going to be taken off of off of the shelves of herb stores this is back also in the in late 80s but um for me, when I use it, I use it dropwise. I use it in slow dosages and always in formula, and it's got incredible uses. So um, let's start with external wound management, but also um, like infected, toxic wounds, like from a bite, like a brown recluse bite or something where you have ulceration. Also ulcers in general, uh, like diabetic ulcers, uh, vascular ulcers, like uh, like venous ulcers. Uh, I've used it for that, especially if they're wet. It's a very drying herb, and it's kind of got a cold, drying quality to it energetically. Uh, but it's but it's very useful for these diabetic ulcers that are that are especially if they're wet. Uh, it really helps a lot, and it increases microcirculation, in my opinion, and it increases tissue proliferation, and increases probably increases angiogenesis, you know, new formation of my of of our capillaries in the area of the of a wound internally. And well, I'm sorry, external. Let's do one more thing. I use it a lot for herpes family viruses. This would be HSV1, HSV2, it could be shingles. Uh, the first experience I really had with seeing it turn around a case of shingles that was dramatic was in Nicaragua once. A woman who had a, an elderly woman who had a really bad case of, sh of a shingles outbreak on her, on her abdomen. And just putting this tincture, I didn't even have the salve or anything, I put the tincture on there and it was incredible. Like within 30 minutes, all the pain was gone, the bumps were, the, the, the you know, the rash itself, the outbreak itself was going away. Uh, this was somebody who was literally crying in pain that within 30 minutes I saw a turnaround. So then I started doing some research on it and realized how much, how effective it is for herpes family viruses. But I use it normally in formula for that. 
with plants like feverfew. I use feverfew a lot for this also, uh, both internally and externally. Uh, um, uh, Prunella vulgaris or uh, um, a self heal spike, uh, you use it in there as well. And then lately for my HSV type stuff and and, sh and um, shingle stuff, I use a lot of the neuroregenerative plants as well in those formulas, like your like your lion's mane, you know, mushroom or your um, uh, cornus, you know, your do Japanese dogwood. There's a whole bunch in there too. But really, this is about you know chaparral. That's how I like to use that uh, internally, though. So one of the things that's really come up about has been the COVID-19. It's just you know recently, of course, that we're in the middle of right now. This is why we're actually on the road is we're dropping off a whole bunch of my uh, formulas up in Navajo Nation where they really were in need of com communities we support that did ask for these. So that's why we're here. And this is one of those plants and this is actually in some of those formulas. Especially somebody who's in the middle of it, what I found. Uh, and and uh, thanks to a few different people who are also herbalists who, who, who were able to give me feedback. And then beyond that, some other clients who were, who were, who were COVID positive started using this, both externally uh, in a steam inhalation as part of a steam inhalation with things like thyme and, uh, and pleurisy root. Uh, having this in there really helped us, or even by itself, just really helps loosen up that phlegm for people who feel like they have, you know, an anvil sitting on their chest and that weight, that heavy weight of getting that stuff out. And then dropwise dosage internally as well. Now, when people take this dropwise, normally in a formula, I have them usually sit and let it sit under the tongue, like sublingually first for a little while and then, and then swallow it. So like 30 to 60 seconds sublingual and then swallow. And that's where you start to really get an immediate effect in the upper respiratory tract for something like this as well. Uh, you can take it internally as well for the for the, the, the herpes family viruses I was talking about before uh, too. But those are the main uses that I find for it. And especially here with the COVID-19 thing, I thought it was kind of apropos to talk a little bit about after seeing it in bloom. And if you've never seen this before or smelled this flower before, I highly recommend, you know, if you're in this part of the country and you see these yellow flowers out there, like I said, you'll see it for, for miles, for hundreds of miles, you'll see this plant out there uh, growing in the middle of these desert you know high altitude kind of deserts that are just seem like they're almost you know like nothing else would grow there you'll see this and mesquite and sage all growing together sometimes juniper and this is where you'll see it and, and get out of the car if you see the yellow yellow flowers if you're in a car or whatever get out and and check it out smell it it's just an amazing it's wonderful to have that scent especially after rain in, in the desert it's just an amazing scent an amazing flower an amazing herb amazing medicinal plant